Light must be snuffed, perfection decayed, order dissolved, and minds fragmented. The Forgotten Realms are filled to the brim with legendary heroes, powerful wizards, extraordinary magics, and terrible monsters. In such a place, where adventurers of all stripes roam, it is easy to forget just how difficult, and sometimes horrific, life for the ordinary folk can be. Should you live on a farm, exposed to the terrors of dragons and orcish hordes, or within the slums of Waterdeep, where every day brings fresh misery and abuse, it is easy to slip into the comforting grasp of madness. There are some who feel this madness is simply an affliction of the mind, but others know better. They know that madness comes from him, the Black Sun, the Eater of Worlds, the Elder Elemental Eye, the God of Madness, Tharizdun. The many gods and goddesses of the realms take on a myriad of forms. Some are strikingly handsome and beautiful men and women. Others present themselves as terrifying monstrous creatures or unassuming beggars and peddlers. Not so with the mad god. It only ever appears as an amorphous, roiling black cyst that churns and contorts within itself like the depths of a tumultuous black sea. The followers of Tharazdun display his roiling greatness as a dark spiral or inverted ziggurat. A simple, basic design depicting the truest depths of madness and anarchy. And there is history behind this insanity. Tharazdun's origins reach as far back as the Dawn War that terrible cosmic conflict between gods and primordials for control over all creation. Back then, he was not mad, but a coherent, cruel, and ambitious force of divinity. The Eater of Worlds, they called him, ever hungry for power and control, and willing to sacrifice anything to achieve it. This ambition and drive led Thara's Dun to the corruption of the Oberinths. The Oberinths came from another reality. They were horrific, demonic flesh shapers, scientists, and mages. These foul beings came to Tharazdun with promises of power. They convinced Tharazdun that the gods were superior to the primordials and were the rightful rulers of the universe. They told him to spark the flames of war, marshal the largely inert primordials to conflict, the gods would unite under this unprovoked attack, and Tharazdun would take his rightful place as the supreme being of all creation. The Eater of Worlds was easily swayed by the promises of the Oberinths, and quickly marshaled the Primordials into assaulting the gods through trickery and lies. The Oberinths were pleased. Their plan to have the gods and Primordials destroy one another, leaving the Celestial Realms open for conquest, was going perfectly. By linking their foul minds to Tharazdun, they had driven the deity utterly mad, and were sure they could use this broken divine being as a puppet. They demanded the now mad god to take their most powerful creation, a sharp black gem that let out a deep purple hue, the Seed of Evil. These Oberons demanded that Tharazdun plant the seed at the heart of the Astral Sea promising him total dominion over the Ocean of Stars if he did so. But even through his madness, Tharazun was aware that his fellow gods would stop and destroy him before he could make it to the Astral Sea. And he knew that the Oberinths, for all their promises, were only trying to control him. So instead, he did something entirely unexpected. He took the seed of evil and planted it within the deepest reaches of the elemental chaos to gain the power to annihilate the gods and the Oberinths. Once planted, the seed burrowed and fed off the endless energies of the elemental chaos, growing and expanding layer by layer, creating a realm of utter chaos and purest evil. The Abyss. 
the mad god did indeed acquire much power from this act, but before he could act again, his fellow gods learnt of this terrible action. The gods that survived the Dawn War bound Tharazdun in chains and robbed him of his physical form, imprisoning him within the deepest layer of the abyss. The Oberinths had suffered a similar fate, for they had poured so much of their foul powers into the seed of evil that they became bound to its fate, trapped within the abyss for all eternity, alongside the monster of their own making. When the gods imprisoned Thara's Dune in the abyss, he was robbed of his divinity, the one thing that makes a god a god. Whatever powers he possessed before planting the seed of evil were lost to him, but still he holds all the power the abyss had given him. What those powers are, none can say for sure. They are wrapped in layers of conspiracy, lies, and madness. Some claim he can shape the souls of dead and living mortals into demons. Others say he can see through the eyes of madmen and spread insanity like a plague. The reality is, his chains keep his true powers at bay, locking away even his true name, preventing morsels from worshipping him and feeding him power in any conventional sense. These chains are but one part of a larger prison. When Tharazdun was imprisoned, he was shunted into his own personal lair of the Abyss. The power of all the gods that battled him forced him into his own demiplane, from which he cannot leave. Void Harrow, it is called. None but Tharazdun himself have been there, and he cannot, or will not, reveal anything about it. The prison seems to exacerbate his madness, making it impossible for him to focus, and thus impossible to escape. In those fleeting moments of lucidity, when his senses return, a plan for escape begins to formulate, but the mad god's mind always returned to its natural state of utter psychopathy. The details of Void Harrow are sorely lacking, but it is said that the old demon prince before the Demogorgon might know a secret path into this prison. Though whether this is boasting or fact, none can say for sure, and none have been willing to find out. As with all gods, the Chained God has a dogma to his own, a set of principles and ideals he wishes to impose upon all of creation. As mad as he is, it is impossible for mortals to discern the truth behind his dogma. His imprisonment and madness left him unable to communicate with his followers in any meaningful manner. He only shrieks and babbles incoherently before disappearing as quickly as he arrived. Despite this, the secret of his imprisonment has somehow been made clear to the cult of the Chained God. Their ultimate goal is to bestow power on Datharazdun, so that he may one day break free of his chains and bring about total destruction and entropy. The majority of this cult are completely mad, being as much a threat to themselves and their fellow cultists as they are to any enemies. The more lucid and powerful cult members take up vague positions of leadership, though no official titles exist in a group dedicated to utter entropy. All of them seek the Chained God's favor, which is given seemingly at random. Gifts of power and insanity are given out for no discernible reason. The lowliest muttering cur could become a warlock of immense destructive power, while a respected and largely sane cult leader will find his senses melted and his mind shattered. This cult, mad as it is, is never short of members. They gather those who yearn for power, desire destruction, or seek some terrible vengeance against the whole of creation itself. Humans, orcs, dwarves, even elves and beasts have fallen to the yoke of the cult of the Chain God. Yet their own disdain for organization and lack of coherency sees them fail to take any positions of power within the major civilizations of the mortal realms. 
The only thing they seem to agree on is that the cult must seek out lost treasures and temples to Thara's Dune. They are seeking for anything that could break his chains, but there is one thing they desire above all. His true name. The one thing that the Mad God needs to become unchained. Once and for all. Channel the power of the Chained God so he can break his chains. Retrieve lost relics and shrines to the Chained God. Pursue the obliteration of the world in anticipation of the Chained God's liberation. Thank you all so much for watching. You guys are all awesome. What do you guys think about gods that are so insane they can't technically be worshipped? Do you guys enjoy them? Do you not enjoy them? Leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, leaving a like, sharing the video around. Do all that stuff that YouTube likes. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.